Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're concluding our quarrel and the Seven Talents of Jian. Let's Talk Lore series with episode 4, titled The Seven Talents. Now, as part of our Coral Let's Talk Lore series, we are not only going to be covering Coral's life, which we ended at the end of our last episode, as Cao Cao finally ordered for Coral's execution in 208, but we're also going to be covering the seven scholars who are collectively known as the Seven Talents of Jian'an, which Coral was part of. Now, the name Seven Talents of Jian'an first appeared in Cao Pi's literature, as he named the top seven scholars that worked for Cao Cao's court during the Jian'an period, which was the last official Han calendar name from the year 196 to 220. Alternatively, because they all resided in the city of Ye at one time, they were also known in history as the Seven Talents of Ye, and they included Kong Rong, Chen Lin, Wang Can, Xu Gan, Ran Yu, Ying Yang, and Liu Zhen. Now, since we already covered Coral's life, this episode will be focused on the other six talents, as it's also worth noting that Coral was the only scholar out of the seven that politically had an issue with Cao Cao, which resulted in his early death in 208. And starting with Wang Can, his father was actually an officer in He Jin's army, which was absorbed by Dong Zhuo's forces after He Jin's death. So when Dong Zhuo moved the capital from Luoyang to Chang'an, Wang Can accompanied his father on that journey and got the chance to meet with the renowned scholar and court official Cai Yong, who returned to court thanks to Dong Zhuo. And after Dong Zhuo's assassination and the civil war that followed, Wang Can escaped Chang'an and took refuge in the Jin province under Liu Biao for over a decade. During this period, Liu Bao provided no opportunities for Wang Can to shine, and it wasn't until in early 208, when Cao Cao's army marched south after Liu Bao's death, that Wang Can finally joined Cao Cao's court and rose to importance, eventually earning himself a second Marquis title. From 213 to 217, after the formation of the Dukedom of Wei and then the Princedom of Wei, Wang Tan served as a court attendant until his death at the age of 41, while traveling with Cao Cao in the 217 campaign against Sun Quan. Of the seven talents, Wang Tan was the best at poetry, as later historians often nicknamed him the crown of the seven talents. 23 of his poems would survive to modern day. Now, to showcase how important and respected Wang Tan was, during his funeral, Cao Pi remarked it, that Wang Tan's favorite thing, while he was still alive, was hearing the sound of a donkey. So let's honor him by mimicking the sound as he led the way by making donkey noises. And this event will coin the Chinese idiom, Lu Ming Song Zhang. Now moving on, we have Xu Gan, who hailed from a minor gentry clan in Beihai. In his youth, he became fascinated with Confucian texts, but instead of using it to pursue a life in politics, all Xu Gan wanted to do was become a hermit to continue his studies. When Cao Cao heard about him, he was made into a court scholar, but after a few years in that post, Xu Gan became ill and had to retire. And when he became a little bit better, Cao Cao once again gave him a government post, but not long after, he would become ill again, and resigned from the post. Finally, in 217, during one particularly bad plague in Ye, Xu Gan would die from the plague. Then next up, we have Ran Yu, who studied under Cai Yong in his youth, and was best amongst the seven talents at writing court edicts, as many of Cao Cao's military proclamations during the early stages of the Jian'an period were written by Ran Yu. Now, even though Ran Yu did not oppose Cao Cao directly, like Kong Rong did, he initially didn't want to work for Cao Cao, as when he was first summoned, he refused. And then when he was summoned again, he fled into the mountains, and only when Cao Cao sent troops to start burning the mountain to smoke him out, did Ran Yu agree to work for Cao Cao. Ran Yu was also a decent poet, even though his poems lacked artistic style, as he favored a straightforward language and mainly wrote about the hardship of the common man during such a turbulent period. 
He would die rather early at the age of 47 in 212 and leave behind a son and a grandson who would both become quite talented scholars during the Wei Jin period. Moving on, we have Ying Yang, who hailed from a clan filled with well-known scholars as his grandfather, Ying Feng, was a respected scholar in his time. His uncle, Ying Shao, was a respected scholar and the administrator of Taishan. And even his father, Yin Xun, was a scholar working in the Grand Excellency office. So it's no surprise that Ying Yang and his younger brother, Ying Chu, were both hailed as prodigies from Runan in their youth. Eventually, he would become Cao Pi's director of archives until his death in the same 217 plague in Ye as his fellow talent, Xu Gan. Next up, we have Chen Lin, who initially started as He Jin's advisor. He famously argued against He Jin's plan of summoning regional forces into Luoyang, but He Jin ignored his advice and ended up dead. He then fled north and joined Yuan Shao's court, where he would eventually pin Yuan Shao's military proclamation before the Guandu campaign, as he would curse out not only Cao Cao, but also Cao Cao's father for being a corrupt official, and Cao Cao's grandfather for being a corrupt eunuch in said military proclamation. But despite this, after Yuan Shao's death and the fall of Ye, Cao Cao still valued his talents enough to hire him as assistant to the prime minister's office until the great plague of 217 Ye, where Chen Lin would also die alongside his fellow talents Xu Gan and Ying Yang. And lastly, we have Liu Zhen, who is probably the least notable of the seven, as he was a grandson of a former Han official and a child prodigy who could recite many of Confucius' works by the age of eight. He would eventually befriend Cao Pi and Cao Zhi and land himself in Cao Cao's court. He was best known for his poetry, as some compared them to Cao Zhi's works. But unfortunately for him, in a feast hosted by Cao Pi, he was caught staring at Cao Pi's wife Lady Jin inappropriately, which landed him in prison before being pardoned to become just a minor official until his death in the same great plague of 217. So in short, these seven talents were all notable scholars of the Jian'an period who were known for either their works in poetry or their excellent prose in court writings. Of the seven, Korong was the first to die in 208 for his political opposition of Cao Cao. Ran Yu would be the only one to die of natural causes in 212, even though he was only 47 at the time. Wang Tan would die in 217 while out on a military campaign with Cao Cao, while the remaining four in Xu Gan, Chen Lin, Liu Zhen, and Ying Yang would all die in the Great Plague of 217 Ye that took many lives. In terms of legacy, their literary works alongside the works of Cao Cao, Cao Pi, and Cao Zhi were seen as the pinnacle of this time period and were studied by many future scholars. And for Koro in particular, even though he died opposing Cao Cao's policies, Cao Pi continued to collect his works after his execution, as Cao Pi would eventually become the one to coin this term, the seven talents of Jian'an, long after Koro's death, showing the value of his literary works despite their political differences. So with that, our episode and series will come to an end, and hopefully you all have enjoyed it enough to hit that like button to help support the channel. For those who are interested in learning more about Confucianism and its role in the course of Chinese history, please also consider becoming a channel member as we just had our first member-exclusive viewing experience covering the life of Confucius himself. Looking forward, the next Let's Talk Lore series will look at the early life of Sima Yi, as we'll cover everything from his birth to his co-regency with Cao Shuang. So hopefully you'll all be joining me for that starting next weekend, and until then, bye!